Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is the EVGA Superclocked Edition of the GTX 580. If you watched my previous video, I paired it with a Q8300 to breathe new life into an old $50 system. Of course this limited GPU performance and many of you wanted to see the 580 flex its muscles a little, so today we'll be throwing this thing in at the deep end against a lineup of modern and popular titles. Just how powerful is the GTX 580 1.5GB in 2017? As a refresh of the Fermi based 400 series cards, Nvidia's 500 series as of 2010 were led by the 580 which was the world's fastest GPU at the time. Selling for $500, this graphics card was ideal for enthusiasts and having picked this one up for just £22 or $28 last week, they are finally an affordable option to most system builders shopping around on the used market. This 1.5GB card features a 797MHz core clock, 512 CUDA cores and 3-way SLI support. Fermi cards are also the oldest to support DirectX 12 too, this one included. As of today, the GTX 580 is about 35% faster than a 750Ti, 5% faster than an RX 460 and 10% slower than a GTX 1050 non-Ti, though it's important to bear in mind the higher power requirements and outdated architecture compared to modern budget alternatives. Get one cheap enough though and it's a steal. So let's get into some games and see what she can do paired with an overclocked Ryzen 3 1200. Crisis 3 first and always demanding title saw an average of 63 with the default medium settings and low texture resolution although the game still looks fantastic even on this preset. AA was also off. Keep in mind, as the 1.5GB version of the card you may have to lower textures. Fallout 4 with the medium preset and nothing changed averaged 48 frames per second. A buttery smooth experience but keep in mind you will see drops into the high 20s in busier settlements like Diamond City but it's nothing game breaking. GTA 5 now and this is where lowering textures comes in. I set things to very high with the textures on normal and the game averaged an impressive 60 frames per second. I also tested it out on high to see a return of 80 FPS which was a delightful result. Overwatch next, a fantastic online FPS that can be a little harder to run on older budget cards in my experience, but the once high end 580 made very light work of it here and came out with 100 FPS as the average with the high preset. If you wanted to enable the frame limiter, this card will have no trouble at maintaining a solid 60 FPS. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds now, a game that will really push old hardware to its limits and given the limited VRAM here I thought we'd be looking at an unplayable result but with the low preset we saw a return of 35 FPS. As a budget gamer I've always been happy with 30 and even with a drop in settings or resolution you probably won't be able to achieve a solid 60 with this card. Rise of the Tomb Raider also proved playable with 38 FPS on the medium settings. This forest level seems to be quite taxing on most older cards and CPUs so it's nice to see a pretty decent result here. The game won't really drop below 30 much but I can't help wonder just how the 3GB version of this GPU would handle these games. Finally to round things off it's The Witcher 3, medium settings again with the low post processing preset to see 42 FPS. Low settings made no real difference when compared to the sacrificing graphical quality and the same goes for a few of the other games which is why I chose medium over low in some of those scenarios. There we have it. The 1.5GB GTX 580 has gone from the world's fastest high-end card to a pretty decent budget option and that's nothing to be ashamed of. With a solid lifespan of 7 years this would have been a worthwhile investment late last decade but if you can find the 3GB version on the used market for a similar price then that would be better thanks to the ever increasing VRAM requirements of some games. I also ran this on a Corsair 550 watt PSU for these tests against the recommended 600 watt one and had no issues with the card consuming around 350 watts of power under load and hitting temperatures of 40 degrees idle and up to 82 degrees under load. The single fan is definitely audible too. Overall the 580 is a worthwhile budget purchase and as for how much I'd pay for one, well I'd probably go up to 50 or 60 pounds or dollars, maybe a little more for the 3GB version, 
just remember you'll need a pretty decent PSU for one and a pretty spacious case. There we have it guys, I hope you've enjoyed this look back at the 1.5 gig GTX 580. It definitely is still a competitive card in 2017 on the lower end of the market. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't. Let me know if you own a GTX 580 or have done in the past and your experiences with it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next video.